welcome to today's lesson, and it is Learning Literature with Sir Joe. I am happy to come your way once again with another lesson on literature. But before we start today's lesson, a little reminder. We introduce a test that we are reading in the month of September, and this test is So in Case the Lion and the Jewel. I believe that a lot of us are doing our best to read along with us. And as I promised, I will come away with discussion on this particular test. Once again, I entreat you to subscribe and share with others this particular channel. And also your comments are very necessary to us. It is through your comments that we can enrich our presentations and skills. So please do comment on our lessons or videos so that we can share ideas together. We have been looking at the elements of fiction and in our previous lesson, we looked at the topic characters. So today we are looking at plot. What is a plot? A plot basically means the sequence of events or a deliberately arranged sequence of interrelated events. So it is not only the sequence of events that we talk about. It is not only the sequence of events, but rather the sequence should have interrelated events. So the events that are presented to us in the storyline should be interrelated. So the events presented to us in the storyline should be interrelated. And that it is a deliberate arrangement that is done by the author. The author does that to deliberately arrange these sequence of events to the reader. Most plots originate in some kind of significant conflict. It is the conflict that brings about the sequence of events. And conflict can be either internal or external. By internal conflict, it simply means that the writer creates some kind of conflict that exists in the person of the protagonist or in the mind of the protagonist. And by external conflict, there are two basic ways, which are person and society or person and nature. Within the person and society, we can also have person-to-person -person conflict, that is man-to-man. -man. So man can have some kind of opposition from a fellow man, some kind of opposition from society, and some kind of opposition from nature. Conflicts become the basic opposition that sets the plot in motion. So a conflict sets the plot in motion, Conflict sets the plot in motion, it engages the reader. Conflict again engages it engages the reader, it builds the suspense. Conflicts also build the suspense and arouses the expectations for the events that are to follow. So these are the four main things that conflict perform. One, it sets the plot in motion. Two, it engages the reader. Three, it builds the suspense. And four, arouses expectations for the events that are to follow.
So we have these four functions of a conflict. And as I said, it becomes the opposition that sets the plot in motion, engages the reader, builds suspense, and arouses the expectations of events that are to follow. So basically, that is what conflict does in a storyline. Now, let's look at the divisions of a plot. Traditionally, a plot has been divided into three basic parts, which are the beginning, the middle, and the end. But when we consider Freitas' pyramid of a plot, we would mostly think of a plot moving through five stages. And these stages are exposition, So we have the exposition, we have the rising action, then we have the climax, falling action, And lastly, resolution. Now, this is what we term Freitas Pyramid. This pyramid gives us five different stages of a plot. And the five different stages can still be categorized into three. Now, the exposition of the story is the beginning. The middle would have the rising action, climax, and the falling action. Then the ending would have the resolution. Another name that we have given to the resolution part of this plot is Genuma. Genuma is a French word that simply means and tying or unnotting, genuine. So, with genuine, we have untying or unnotting the plot or the storyline. Now, we will look at each stage. That is starting from exposition, then we move to the resolution aspect of the plot. The exposition of a plot is basically the beginning section where the author gives important background information, sets the scene, establishes the situation, and dates the action. So we have background information that is very important to readers. And we are given this background information at the beginning of the story. So we have the background information which is very important to the reader. The writer also sets the situation. The writer also can give us an information about the characters and even the setting. So it is at the exposition stage that the writer introduces to us his characters. And again, the writer can also introduce the conflict of the story at the exposition or the intended conflict. So if you don't meet the conflict here, we would rather be introduced to the probable conflict that is to happen or to occur in the storyline. So we move from the exposition, that is the beginning of the story, to the middle part. And the middle part is divided into three different stages, which starts from the rising action. The rising action is also known as the complication. So at this particular stage of the story, 
the story develops and intensifies. And with its intensification, we are given the conflict. If the writer does not introduce the conflict at the exposition stage, he would then introduce the conflict at this particular stage. And this is where he develops and intensifies the conflict. If the conflict, as I said, is not introduced here, it is introduced at the rising action stage. And the events rise. The events rise. Complications are developed. Mostly, writers also employ the device suspense where they sustain the interest of the reader. So, when the story is developing, or when the storyline is being intensified, the writer can also choose to introduce the device suspense. And this device would help the writer sustain the interest of the reader so that the reader can read on to the end of the story. So from the rising action or the complication stage, the writer moves us to climax, climax or the crisis. Climax or the crisis. The crisis or the climax stage is the highest point of interest. That is where readers get the greatest emotional intensity of the story and it is also the turning point of the plot. At this particular stage, all interest in the storyline which was intensified at the rising action now gets to its highest or peak. So readers would have the highest point of interest at this particular stage where one maybe whoever sets the conflict in motion has been identified or the major point of conflict has been identified here and everything that was intensified at the rising action stage has gotten to its peak so the moment the story starts turning, then we come to the stage where we call the falling action. So at the falling action stage, the interest of the reader now starts falling. That is, the tension in the story reduces and the plot moves towards the conclusion. So at the falling action stage, we have the interest of the reader which achieved its climax now starts falling. So there is a kind of diminishing returns where everything that was intensified or heightened, now because the reader has achieved this highest point, that interest begins or that tension begins to fall. And it falls towards the conclusion of the story where we turn the resolution. Now we move on to resolution. That is the end of the story. The end of the story. Now at the resolution stage, it records the outcome of the conflict and tries to get solution to every problem that existed in the storyline. So at this stage, what we notice is that it gives the outcome of the story. So we are given whether the story will end at, on a happy note or on a sad note. Will those that committed evil be punished? And those that did good things, will they be rewarded? If there was any major conflict that has still not been solved, from the climax to the falling action, it is the resolution that helps us to unlock or untie that particular conflict. That is why we are told that the resolution gives or records the outcome of the conflict. Basically, 
the Freitas pyramid has given us five different stages. And as I said, the traditional division of a plot is beginning, middle, and end. But when we consider Freitas pyramid, we have five different divisions, and these divisions are exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. We are giving synonymous names, and these synonymous names we find one at rising action, which relates to complication. Climax can also be known as crisis. Resolution can also be known as genuma. And as I said, genuma is a French term which basically means untying or unknotting. So today, our lesson on plot has given us an idea on what a plot is, the basics of a plot, and the divisions of a plot. And we realize that a plot is a deliberately arranged sequence of interrelated events. So when a writer deliberately arranged sequence of events, that is what we term a plot. And we got to know that conflict becomes the basic opposition that sets plot in motion, that engages the reader, that builds suspense, that arouses the expectations of events that may follow. And we have two basic types of conflict. It can either be internal or external. So that is basically what we did today, or what we are learning today. And I would entreat all of us to comment and share ideas on this particular lesson so that we can broaden our horizon on every topic that we treat. Thank you. But before I sign out, I would encourage you to subscribe and share with others. I'll come your way next week with a part two of this session on plot. Thank you very much.